I want to teach you how to make a shadow box. It's really easy to make and really, really strong and um, inexpensive. Um, all you need for supplies are, uh, this is a, just some shelf board. This is 12 inches wide and I've cut those three feet long. So that's just pine, cheap pine shelf board, two, three feet, and then another one three feet. These are two by fours. These are 64 inches. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then these two are cut to two feet. So two feet, 64 inches, three feet. And then I'll, let me show you how to put those together. So what I'm gonna do is screw these two H's together and let me show you how to do that. Um, the first thing is to put a mark at 40 inches from the bottom. That's going to be where the floor is, where it sits on the floor. And this is 40 inches exactly, right there. So we'll put a mark there. And then I'll just draw a line. And then the 2x4 is going to connect onto that side, like so. Okay, so let me screw that on. I'm going to drill two holes at, an, at a diagonal. Definitely need to use wood glue when you do this. So I'm going to put it on this side of the line. Put some wood glue down. If you don't use wood glue, your uh, table will end up being real wobbly or more wobbly than it would be otherwise. So what I'm going to do is put in, I'm going to put this more or less in the right spot as much as I can see using the right angle to make sure it's right. I'm not worried about this one right now. Get that more or less right on the line. Put in a single screw. And then what I'm going to do is recheck it after I put one screw in. If I need to bump this at all to get it exactly perfectly right. Okay, that's perfect. You can use a CD case. If you don't have one of these right angles, you can use a CD case and check it. But, okay, so one screw's in, we'll put in the other screw, holding it exactly in position. Another important thing is the drill bit that I'm using for this absolutely has to be, the drill bit has to be bigger than the screw. Otherwise your wood won't clamp together with the glue. So that's real important. Okay, so that one's on and now we'll just attach this one. I've already put a, a mark at 40 inches. Put that on the side of the mark. And do the very same thing. Drill two holes. Put some glue. Put it right on the mark and then check my right angle again. We're going to put in a single screw first and then recheck the right angle. That's important. And then recheck it and then put in your second screw. Okay, so that's one H, and we're going to build the other one exactly like that. So after we've got the two H's built, then we'll show you the next step. Okay, so now that I've got the two H's screwed together, I've brought it inside my studio. Um, one thing to consider before you uh, put all this together 
is whether or not once you put it together you can still fit it through the door to get it into your studio. So depending on how big your door is and everything, you may want to finish putting this together inside your studio before, uh, otherwise you may not be able to get it in. Okay, so I've got the two H's built and I'm going to show you one more thing. I didn't talk about this earlier. This is not absolutely necessary that you do this, but I'm just going to add another piece, another board down here. And this is just, if, you, if I take this H like this, you know, obviously if I put a lot of weight over here, it's going to bend this, even with the glue. And you've got to have the glue in there. Make sure you wait for your glue to dry before you, before you do any of this. But now that the glue's dried, if I want to give it a little extra strength so that I won't bend it, you know, or it, it's this, like I said, this is not necessary, but it'll just add a little bit of strength. Now, so I'm going to just take this board and put it anywhere down in this bottom area, and we're just going to screw two boards on. You could do this with a 2x4, but this flat piece of wood will work a little better. So I've got two drill holes, and I'll screw that together with some glue. Okay, so I screwed the first, the first board on, I'll put the, another one on the other side, on the other edge. Okay, so now that I've finished the two H's, I'm going to, um, this one is just being held up here to support the wood on this side. I'm going to screw it and glue it to this one first. Um, remember to make sure that the holes that you drill that the screw can slide through like that, that's real important, so you get a good clamp. And the next thing is notice that I'm putting this board below this 2x4. Don't try to put it on top because if you don't, if there's any, if this is higher than this at all, it's going to make it all wobbly and you're not going to get a good glue contact. So I'm going to put it just right below the 2x4. So make sure you put some glue on. So I'll put a little bit of glue on there. And glue down this first one. Check it with a right angle. And screw it in. You can always screw one screw in first and then recheck the angle and you make sure your right angle hasn't changed. And if it has, you can bump it like that and screw in the next screw. Okay? And now we'll uh, do attach it to the other side. Now you're going to want to make sure that this one is exactly the same distance below here. You know, it's almost lined up. It's just a fraction below this 2x4. But this one on this side should also be the same distance, same small fraction below here. And that way we know it'll all end up straight when we put it together at the end. So I'll put in one screw. Got the glue in there. And then I'll check the rightness after I've got one screw in. And bump it until it's exactly square. Okay, so now that one's on and we just have to put the one on the other side and we're just about done. Get somebody to help you when you turn this over so you don't crack these, this board or screws. Because until we get the board on the other side, it's, it's going to be flimsy. Okay, so now I've got it turned over. I'm just going to screw this board on. And this one's a lot easier because we don't have to check anything. Because we're going to just make it all fit together. In other words, we're just going to screw it on because we're going to assume everything's right from the other one. The main thing is just to position it in the same spot slightly below this 2x4. No overlap. It's got to be completely below. Okay, so then once you've got all that screwed in, I would let the, the glue dry for at least a couple hours, if not overnight, so that it's nice and once that glue dries, this is going to be way stronger so that 
We don't want to be moving it around until the glue is good and dry. Um, and then all we've got to do is put a roof on top, which I'll show you after the glue dries. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this piece of plywood, and this isn't, doesn't have to be exact, but this one I think is roughly, I think I cut it to 48 inches. That's 48 inches deep, and, or four feet deep, and then about 45 inches wide, but 48 inches probably be even better. So just do like a 48 inch by 48 inch square, and then I'm just gonna take these strips here and screw them on to the bottom, like, like so, just all around. So I'll just take a little bit of wood glue, put it on the strip here, and then I've already drilled some holes along the edge. I just put three, that's all you need, and just line this up and glue these strips down along the edges, and that'll give the uh, plywood some reinforcement. Um, you know, you don't have to put the strips on if you use a thicker piece of plywood, but if you set this roof on the top of your shadow box after about a month or so or weeks, it starts to sag. So that's why I put the reinforcement on. And go ahead and put your wood all around before you screw it in. Just to hold it up so that this first one gets screwed on right. Okay, so the roof is finished. I've just screwed these strips onto the sides like that with some wood glue. And now this will sit up on top like so. Now, the reason I've cut this hole in this, this long hole here is we're gonna put our light up top here in a, in a little box. And the, the box with the light in it is, can be moved so that if you want to have your light toward the back of your still life, you can set your box here if you wanna move it forward, you can move it forward. If you want to move it over to the right, you can slide the whole roof to the right or to the left. And that way, by doing those two things, you can position your light anywhere over your whole shadow box table. So let's uh, move the, let's just put this on top of the uh, shadow box and I'll explain a couple more things. Okay, so here's the finished shadow box, more or less finished. Um, this is where you would put your surface that you want to paint on, or rather, do you want to set your still life on. So you can put a piece of marble in here, or a piece of wood in here, or whatever you want to do. Um, if you want to go ahead and screw in a piece of, like a pine wood shelf in here, that you can set your stuff on, that's fine. But if you have a piece of marble or something that's going to just lay in here, you, then you don't even need this piece of wood. But this, uh, that's basically it. So we're gonna, let me put the roof on. <clears throat> so the roof would normally stick out a lot, like something like that. And you could even put a counterweight back here on the back if it's gonna you know, tilt out. But you can have it stick way out front like that and just put like a you know, brick or something back here on the back. And then your light's gonna go in here. So, uh, and I'll show you um, after we get this sanded and painted, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a shelf here for myself, if, uh, and you can do that too, um, and then I'll sh demonstrate basically how to use it um, after I've got the light set up. So let me go uh, sand this, paint it, put a shelf in here, and then I'll demonstrate the light. <clears throat> Okay, so I've painted everything black, and I've also built this box that I'm going to put my light in. It's got some ventilate, big ventilation holes on the top, and then the center one is where my light's going to hang down. Um, on the inside, about one-third of the way in is painted black all the way around, and then two-thirds all the way into the bottom is all white, and that's important because otherwise it's, all the black will absorb all your light. You don't want the white coming all the way down to the bottom here because it'll soften up your light too much. So that's about right, one third black, the rest white. Okay, and this is gonna sit up on top of my roof. Now, let me show you about the roof here. I've got two pieces of fabric that I've stapled on. This one, this is the front edge of the roof, and this is gonna hang down 
okay? And I'll show you in a minute how that works, but I just wanted to show you where I stapled this on, right in front of this hole here, front edge here, and this is going down. The other piece of fabric is for the side. So let me just show you how all that works. Okay, so I've got the light inside. I'm going to put this up top. Now notice, I can put it way back here in the back, or I can slide it forward to change the position of my light. Make sure that if you do slide it all the way forward that you put a counterweight back on the back here so that your roof doesn't tilt forward. Okay, so I'm just going to move these boards around. Now watch as I slide this in how it can affect the sh create shadows and a lot more drama. So you can play with that all day long. I could slide one in from this side and create a little triangle. So now I only have a little spot of light right there in the front. Um, I even use sticks. And if you throw a stick across, right across the light, it'll, it can sometimes you know, create an interesting shadow. So you can play with that all day long. And then you can also, if you want to move the position this light, you can slide it all the way to the front if you want your light coming more from the front. Or you can slide it all the way to the back. Or we can move the whole roof, shift the whole roof left or right. Especially if you have a bigger roof than I do. I mean, I could have made this wider and it would have been better. Uh, but by doing all those, those two things, you can position the light anywhere you want and create uh, shadows. This fabric here on the side, you don't necessarily have to have this one. I have put it here because we've got a big filming light over on the right, and I don't want the filming light coming in and hitting my, my shadow box. So that's why I've hung that there. If I had a light, a window or something on this side, I'd put one back here. The other thing I can do is hang fabric back in the back by, you know, attaching it to, this, uh, to these uprights in the back. So you can do anything you want, and that's the, the whole objective of this shadow box is, is to give you a lot of versatility so you can adjust it however you want to adjust it. So that's pretty much it. Now let me show you the front fabric, and I'll explain that. Okay, so the fabric here in the front is essential, and what it's for is so that you're not staring up into your still life light. So it's real important that this fabric hang down long enough so that when you're sitting here in front of your easel comfortably and you look at your still life, you should not be able to see that light up there. Okay, and that's real important. Um, and the other thing is, and if you're, gonna, if you're gonna use a color checker with this uh, shadow box, then your color checker uh, cannot see that light either. And what I mean by that is, if I'm sitting here in my easel and I'm holding out my color checker like this, uh, my color checker, if I put my head in space, where my color checker is, so if I'm checking here, and then I move my head to here, I should not be able to see that light from where my color checker is, because I don't want any light coming and putting glare or reflection on the paint on my color checker. So, again, let me just hold out your color checker in front of you when you're sitting comfortably at your easel, move your head into position, and you should not be able to see that light. If, it, if you can, then this needs to be longer. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the shadow box. And that's about all there is to it.